Revolution. Welcome back, adventurers. Today's episode is a little bit different and kind of special because today we're talking about one of our favorite movies, the 1999 cinematic masterpiece, The Mummy. This summer, Universal Pictures invites you on an extraordinary adventure beyond life and time. Come on, come on! If you haven't seen The Mummy, well, it's been out for 24 years. But I also threw that comment in because I just found out Grandpa has not seen The Mummy. No. So, Grandpa, stop watching now. Go watch The Mummy, then come back. Thanks for watching. And repent. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, that's sad. What a sad For the life. rest of you, like, he's 90. You don't have that excuse, okay? <laughs> the rest of you, the movie's 24 years old. You should have seen it by now. <clears throat> yeah, and it's worth it's worth your time. Go go watch it. It's so worth your time. It's the best. Like, I mean, not to jump to the end here, but this is one of the best adventure movies ever made. Um, it's easily, like, to me, there's the original Indiana Jones trilogy and this. Mm -hmm. Those are the best ones. I mean, there's a couple that come really, really close to that, too. Romancing the Stone, Secret of the Incas, I hold in high regard, but, like... This one is up there, is the yeah. point. And we saw it in the theater right after it came out. I was 15, almost 16. You were, what, eight? I think I was eight, and it's the, actually the first movie I remember seeing in the movie theater. I'm sure I saw other movies before that. But you it's did, the but... first one I have a vivid memory. And I remember mom was having... A candle party. Yes. So dad and had we to had get the to get kids out of the, out of the house. house. <laughs> so <laughs> so we went to see it, and I remember before we went, mom was like, "Isn't that going to be a little too scary for for her?" Because I was a chicken. Um, yeah, yeah, no denying. Um, <laughs> and he he was like, "No, it'll be fine." And I remember I enjoyed it. But for an eight-year-old. It did scare you a little bit. A little bit. I remember you were a little scared. Yeah. And then we got home and mom was like, did you have fun? And I said, yeah, it was a little scary. And I remember the look she gave dad <laughs> just looking up like, yep. oh my gosh. So but funny. I also remember he came in the house and he was really excited too. And he was just like, yeah. you've got to see it. He said, it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark. And it kind of is, you know? Yeah. I had been really looking forward to this movie. The trailers had been on TV for weeks, if not months, mm -hmm. at this point. And <laughs> I was, I, I've always liked mummy movies. Um, this was before I really realized that a lot of the movies I liked were all adventure movies. So I hadn't made that connection in my head yet. Mm -hmm. But I always liked mummy movies anyway. And so I was like, this, this one looks awesome. And so I'd been talking to my friends about it, like, I really want to see that. Let's go see that when it comes out. Well, as, as you know, like, we didn't plan to go see it when we did. So it was sort of a spur of the moment thing. And, uh, you know, dad was like, let's go see the mummy. And I'm like, sweet. So we went and saw it. And uh, one of my friends was kind of pissed that, because we were going to go see it together, you know. Uh oh. Betrayal. But like in our family, we don't do a lot of planning. No, it's very it fly by the seat of our pants. Very much. So, yeah. but man, what a movie. This, I have bought this movie more times. Like the only other movies that even compare are the Indiana Jones movies and Star Wars, as far mm -hmm. as number of times. So I don't know if you remember after we went and saw this, uh, shortly thereafter it came out on dvd and i had to have it mm -hmm. we didn't even have a dvd player at that <laughs> point but i didn't care and i still have that oh my gosh that's awesome and then of course you know <clears throat> blu-ray i love that one with the case and then 4k and man mm -hmm. this movie looks great in 4k that's awesome and i have something i want to show you Ooh, i'm excited 
I still have. Come on. No. Do you have your movie ticket? <gasps> I have yes! my movie ticket. Oh my gosh, the from the Cinema bad, 6. But uh, that's it. <sighs> so this, this is not the ticket from when we saw it. Because we saw it right after it came out. Because mm-hmm. you remember, like, it was it was that weekend. And we had to get out of the house. Right. So this is from, the, I don't actually know what happened to our ticket stubs from that trip. Mm-hmm. This is from when I went the next week to see it with my friends. Still cool. Yeah. And I also have the ticket for The Mummy Returns. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. It's so, I watched it again. As um, did I. For homework. Just to, even though I'm pretty sure I could quote the entire thing, including soundtrack. <laughs> we probably um, Because <laughs> I love it. Um, but watching it again, you know, as an adult, I haven't watched it for a few months. <laughs> Got to at least watch it once or twice a year, you know. Yeah. Um, it's been it's, like, I remember you specifically carved out time to watch it for your birthday. I did. Yes. So it's My... been since then. Yeah. My husband's not a huge movie fan. Well, and like, he's also very much not a scary movie guy. Yes. But I, I remember don't, I don't think this would scare him. No. But no, this one's it's mild enough that that's not the case, but he I, you know, he asked what do you want for your birthday and I was like, I really want to watch The Mummy. <laughs> It was just a great birthday. He sat with me on the couch while I quoted the whole thing at him. <laughs> but he was um, not available for comment to see how great that was for him. <laughs> um, no, but it's got it's got like the fun and adventure of the Indiana Jones trilogy. I think it's comparable. I think it's up there on that level. Um, the time period is super fun. Works yeah. really well for that uh, location, of course is also very cool, very interesting. It's a good Um, combination of... Because, I mean, it's not a full-on scary movie, but there's there are some things that are kind of scary. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of humor. There's, you know, adventure elements, and it's all very well balanced, and I really like that about it. It's just... Yes. Romance. It's got, like, it's got something for everybody. It's got this... To me, now this might be blasphemous to some people, but to me, it has the same level of, like, wit and romance that, like, The Princess Bride has. The ensemble of characters play off each other really well. They tease each other. There's Rachel Weiss and Brendan Fraser. Their chemistry is so good. You know? (laughs) Apparently, yeah. Is that not how you say it? Like Razor. It's got one S, so I always <laughs> I assumed. Know. I, I've seen interviews and things where he's talked about that. It's kind of a pet peeve. It's, it's Fraser like Razor. So. Oh. Now you know. I will never say I'm not chewing again. out. I'm not trying to be the, uh, <laughs> actually, but uh, yes. But they anyway. do. They have chemistry. So good. That's, I mean, that's the one of the main reasons I wanted to go back for the second movie. And I remember this probably, you can cut this out, but <laughs> her hair and her makeup. Not cut this out. No, this is gold. Um, her hair and makeup were so different in the second one. <laughs> yes. I remember we saw it and I was like, I wanted the same girl from before. Well, and honestly, you guys like, were like, that is her. Oh, see, and I didn't remember that you didn't, until you just said that, I forgot that you didn't recognize her. Yeah, that is yeah. this, but she does look very different in the second she does. movie. She does. I liked that she was more tough in the second one, and like, oh yeah, but hold her own a little bit better. She's still, she's not a, you know, she's not like a token damsel in distress in this first movie, which is another reason I really like it. She may not, her strength is not necessarily in the physical. You know, yeah. she can't. Yeah, you know. Like Rick is teaching her how to throw a punch when she's drunk. Yeah. You know, she doesn't know a lot. But, you know, there's the moment in the car when everyone's climbing on it and she pokes the guy in the eye. She does what she can. <laughs> and, um, but she's also, you know, the one that has to. Oh, read. she's necessary. Yeah. They need her. The movie couldn't. I mean, she does cause the trouble by reading the book in the first place, but of course. she fixes it too. But she's basically just indispensable for her own special reasons. In oh, the movie. absolutely. And yeah. I like that. Yeah. 
And I like that they didn't have to make her just as tough as the rest of the guys. You know, she is a unique person with her Mm -hmm. own set of talents and skills. And I like that. Yes. And you know what else I like? I like the fact that Rick notices that and understands that about her. Yeah. So like when he steals the toolkit for her. Yeah. And gives that to her as a gift. The dude paid attention to what she was interested in, thought about what is something that she could use or would like. Yeah, because they'd lost all that at that point. And then he gave it to her. Yeah, he stole it, but, you know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. There's just things like that. Like, their relationship is very... uh, Synergistic, I would say. Yes, and it's like, it's healthy compared to a lot of movie relationships that you see. There's not any unnecessary drama or grossness yeah. between them. It's, I, I don't, I really appreciate that about it. I do too. Uh, what did you think of the CGI? You know, <sighs> you notice more, of course it's in high yeah. definition. Now TVs are better. Um, better. And my eye is better than when I was eight years old, I guess. But um, maybe <laughs> just a little. So you pick out more, but there are some shots that I think hold up extremely well. That's what I was gonna say. There are some shots that are really, really good. Like there when, are uh... some shots that I didn't feel like worked that great when I first saw the movie, and that's uh-huh. there are only a couple. Uh, one of those is. Like when the mummy takes Mr. Burns' eyes, oh, his okay. eye sockets have always looked fake to me, how they make it look like an empty eye socket. Uh, they they digitally... Oh, you know, I'm thinking of a different shot, because I know that there's the digital one, but then there's one later when they put him in front of the magi. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's it's like a... Or like swollen shot, yeah. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, I'm talking about when he first turns around, because, you know, Eden... <laughs> Season. Right. My tongue. They took, took my, tongue. my tongue. Uh, I never thought that worked really well, and I al- always felt like it, you could just do like dark, or or even better, just do makeup and make it look swollen shut. Yeah, but I don't. Would you see that much light into the back of someone's eye sockets? I don't want to know. That's kind of why it why it doesn't work for me is because it's like a brighter than everything else around it like there's little candles inside his eye sockets you know <laughs> well and it would probably be pretty bloody but i imagine yes adding blood would make it a not pg-13 movie so yeah. and that was a line they were apparently trying to skate mm. pretty <laughs> Makes sense. i feel like they were on thin ice with hot blades with this movie in a couple of ways you know oh yeah well so the one that you told me about, <laughs> I hate it. I hate that I watched and I hate that I paused to look. Are we talking about the warden? Yes. <laughs> All right. I hate it I so was... <laughs> bad. I was like, no, there's no way. It's got to be something else. And then I saw it and I'm like, no. And I had to try, I think, four or five times to get it paused at the right frame. But I don't think that's well, it's a... definitely there. <laughs> It's not mistakable, and it's no. so too bad. Uh, so I, I can't, I, how does that get into a final cut of a movie? So how let me no one notice to the viewers who don't know what I'm talking about. There, uh, there's a scene. The warden sneaks off by himself in Hamanoptera and starts stealing the little golden scarabs off the wall and putting them in his bag. One of them drops on the sand and wakes up for some reason and. <laughs> burrows into his foot and starts just climbing its way up his body. And he starts to freak out as you, as you would and starts like trying to hit it, trying to stop it. And while he's batting around at his midsection, <laughs> uh, something kind of pokes out to say hi. <laughs> it's only for like six frames. It's so, but it's it so is fast. There. And I have seen this movie dozens of times oh i've literally dozens. seen this hundreds of times yeah and i i never bothered never to, saw it well, for one thing i wasn't looking at his groin during the scene you know what i mean come on yeah i mean <laughs> but like i i never <laughs> it wasn't until about a year ago and there were memes going around there's a, like a thriving mummy meme community <laughs> online yes and bless uh, them. It, it went out on there and i was like no no way. 
so I had to check, and of course, it's there. <laughs> it is. So I, I don't know. We may have to add a new segment to this show for things that were accidentally in a movie that weren't supposed to be. We may have to call it <laughs> Warden's Wang. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm open to submissions, but that's what I'm that's what I'm leaning towards right now. But you were saying, how does something like that make it into a movie? Okay. There's yes, because first of all, how does the actor not notice? Oh well so here's the thing about that. I don't know how long it's been since you've watched the movie with the director commentary. Oh, it's been a while, yeah. But I remember the director talking about how when they shot this scene because you know what happens first is he starts freaking out because the bug's crawling up his leg and then it gets about to his waist region and he rips open his shirt and according to the director on one take when he ripped open his shirt something was peeking okay so you they wouldn't knew... expect that to be in whatever they left in the final film then, right? You would think that they would be like, oh, okay, let's make sure. You would think. Yeah, because that's be wrong. the thing. The actor should have said, hey, if nobody else noticed, uh, maybe we shouldn't use yeah. that take because no I kidding. felt a breeze. Can I get some gaffer's tape or something? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. Anyone have a sock? That would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Um... Then you've got your director, your yeah. people on set, you've well, got I mean, your editors. You're surrounded by like 30 people at the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really kind of surprising to me. And then they end up, uh, I, I don't know. You would think, though, because that happened, that they would be like extra scrupulous when they're checking right? other takes to make sure that that wouldn't happen. I will but, say uh, it is. It's lightning fast, so if you're not oh, looking yeah. for it... Like I said, it's like six frames, so it's like a quarter of a second. Yeah. So I guess, but I still am like... Nowadays, people have... It's there. <laughs> they have ways to oh, yeah. pause and zoom and... Anyway. Well, so I, I was looking up uh, trivia for this movie, just for, mm -hmm. just for fun. And, you know various places you get trivia it's either stuff you've heard a hundred times like did you know brendan fraser almost died when they filmed the hanging scene yeah like everybody knows that like at know. this point it's not even trivia anymore it's just it is and it's hard to watch that scene after you know that like oh he's <laughs> like almost actually dying anyway go on yeah. that's something isn't it yeah. um so in the trivia uh it talks about how they had to and uh, this is mentioned in the director's commentary also, but about how after they jump off the ship into the Nile because the ship's on fire, you have the great scene everybody loves, you know, looks to me like I've got all the horses. Well, Rachel Weiss is in this white nightgown, and the director even says, don't even bother pausing because we had to digitally erase, you know, the wet t-shirt contest that resulted from that. <laughs> Which is is fine. Like the the trivia basically said they had to do that to keep a PG thirteen rating, which I can kind of believe. You know, yeah, sure. I mean, I apparent I I just wonder where the line is because you can have basically a naked woman painted gold, and apparently that's okay once, <laughs> but you, you it, can't. We've gone a little too far to Girls Gone Wild <laughs> here, you know. So it's the nips, man. It's those. You can't, <laughs> I guess. You can't show those. Although a penis is fine. The penis, yeah. As long the as it's six fine. frames or less. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try and keep it less than a second and we'll allow it. <laughs> cool. It's the only snake in the movie, I think. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry about that. No. Anyway, we were talking about CGI. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like it kind of falls into three categories. Like I said, there's a couple, and it's only very few, but there were a couple of shots that I noticed, even when I saw it in the theater in 1999, that I didn't think were that great. And they're very few. Like I said, just like the 
digitally removing his eyeballs or whatever. Sure. And then there were ones that I feel like held up then and they still hold up now. And there are quite a few of those. And then there are ones that I feel like I didn't notice them on a movie screen, but on home video when it's in higher definition and you can watch it 50 times and, you know, I can tell you the movie screen in 99 was not 4K. So, oh, I'm sure. you know, things yeah. look a little different now. Um, there are some shots that I guess haven't aged well because of that, but they looked great at the time. Like all of the sand effects, like the face in the sand. Yeah. The, uh, well, the face in the sand towards the start of the, the movie, the face in the sand cloud that chases the biplane. Those all looked really amazing at the time. And part of it also is our, I think, our attitude towards CGI these days. Mm -hmm. I I really want to emphasize that in 99 CGI was still this amazing thing that everybody was wowed by. Nobody mm -hmm. was sick of it yet. You weren't it like we haven't hadn't reached the phase where there was just digital vomit all over the screen which <laughs> happens so much now. And this movie does a pretty good job of restraining itself and part of that was probably out of limitations they probably didn't have the money or the technology to do complete cgi vomit like they do now sure because uh, the mummy returns leans a little more that's what into i was that. just gonna say is yes it wasn't really until two years later in the mummy returns that a lot of people were like oh okay that's what happens when you take cgi too far yes lesson learned and i i still like the mummy returns but i don't feel like it is on par with this no, you know, it has yeah. it has some issues, and we'll have to review that separately. Oh, later sure, on, but love to bring yes. it on. Uh, but <clears throat> there is there's so much stuff that I when I rewatched this, I was just like, man, that's still really good. And you yeah, know, I will say the scarabs. There were some shots where it's like, okay, I can see oh, yeah. that. Yeah, you know. Um, and then there's like the when they're lined up waiting for the sun to rise to get into Hamanoptera and this behind the rock the behind them, the sky CGI. is CGI. Yeah. And you can kind now, of tell something's not right. Well, and see, at the time, I remember seeing that and it's like, I think that's CGI sky. How did they change the like they changed the entire sky? Well, and really <laughs> what it is is they were not filming at that time of day and wanted to make it look like it was that time of day, pre dawn, you know. Sure, which is um, and funny because being blown away by that, but it doesn't look as well now, right? As it did then. But you know what looks great is when Emotep first wakes up. So the scene where he's leering at um, Evie, thinking that she's an Oxnamoon. I think that that scene is great. And I still then, think it is too. Oh gosh! And then the one that kills me because I I still think it's awesome is when Benny runs into him and Benny drops the torch so the and light the goes behind changes. him. Gosh, he looks... It's so good. It's really good. It's still pretty freaking good. It is, Great yeah. Scene. Well, and like the entire intro scene... So the intro is not all CGI. A lot of the intro stuff was miniatures that they then enhanced with CGI. So See, and that's when it usually works best, I that think. Is, yeah. Well, yeah. then that's kind of a lost art these days. They don't even bother anymore. It's just all CGI. But I mean, they, I guess had, it makes sense. they had an actual Sphinx and it had little tiny uh, scaffolding on it. Oh, cool. And then they had that town square. And, you know, the people were all added in CGI. And I'm pretty sure the. Uh, I actually don't remember if the pyramid is or not. But anyway, the camera is panning over and then you see this wall. And next to this wall is a guy. The, the pharaoh driving a chariot the wall and the chariot and the road and all of that all those people are real that was filmed as a separate piece that they just sort of patched into the whole thing and it worked like it just looks really good yeah i i remember being blown away by the fight where uh o'connell basically just jumps in with a sword yeah and cuts the chain and then has to fight like 12 cgi mummies that aren't actually there can I just, could we give a round of applause for Brendan Fraser and whoever else, whoever choreographed that fight? 
I have done, I have done this much fight choreography in my life. And it's, it's hard to make it look good when you're actually doing it with another physical person. It's so hard. And every time I watch that, I have to remind myself there was no one there. There was no one there with him to aim at, or he's just, well, it was, not... <laughs> I think it just had to be memorized like a dance routine, you know? Right. But like, I just picture like, how does it not look like this? He's so, it's so uh, well fun. It's so If good. you watch the extra stuff, they have some footage of him doing it without the mummies added in. Oh my god! And it's just really impressive to watch. I mean, you probably feel really silly doing it, but... <laughs> Well, and then I, let's I still just talk think about, that's impressive as a performer, his commitment to it, too. Yes. Because yeah. that could you probably do feel really See, silly. That's why I'm not an actress, because I couldn't do that. <laughs> I just feel like, what? <laughs> what? You're just are you like... freaking kidding me? Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? But what hey, are we doing? That's why I chose this lucrative line of work <laughs> instead of that. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, CGI that still blows me away, uh, the destruction of Hamanatra. That's, it's really good. So, I have to wonder how much of that is practical. Like when they're running and the, the sand is falling behind their feet, that that's looks practical. real. Is that it? is practical. Okay. The stuff falling over is practical. So but basically what it was, there's this place in Morocco, which is uh, the crater of an extinct volcano, cool. which is what, you know... The scene when the sun rises, we're about to be shown the way. And you can see kind of this gap in the crater that goes like this. That crater exists, and there is an old fort that is built in there. Wow. And the fort is a couple of hundred years old or something like that. But then they built sets, you know, all the Egyptian looking stuff uh, inside there too. So with the CGI, you see like the brickwork of the fort falling down and supposedly, I think this is in the director's commentary too. He talks about how people from Morocco saw the movie and were really concerned that they'd destroyed this <laughs> centuries old fort because oh, no. the CGI in that part looks so good. That's, a That's one of those right stories there. that sounds like, yeah, sure they did, but like you watch <laughs> that and it's pretty convincing. Yeah. But those shots specifically, like, you know, you see parts of pieces of rock kind of raise up yeah, and like, tip over and big clouds of dust. Uh, that's just, that still blows me away, that shot. That's a really impressive switch. Can we talk about the switch that the Pharaoh set up there? That's a really yeah, impressive no switch that can take an entire city and just go. <laughs> like, where should we put this switch that'll destroy the whole city? Uh, what, what about in this hallway? Let's just stick it in this hallway. It'll be out of the way. Should we put I mean, a sign by it, maybe? Just that, like, uh, it wouldn't matter, I guess. Little... It's an Egyptian, so... <laughs> maybe one of those little glass covers, yes. like, do not break glass unless there <laughs> well, that, is. Like they have on an airplane, not a step. Like, yeah. not a place to rest saddlebags. <laughs> I had to think that this time. When I was younger, I'd always be like, what? Who puts something like that <laughs> right know. there? But, to be fair... I'll, I'll, for the benefit of the doubt, you know. Yeah. It probably is written there, and it's you know thousands of years old. Things get worn away. Well, I like mean, red paint and caution tape, and sure, which the ancient well, Egyptians I mean, definitely had. <laughs> right. I'm sure it was there. <laughs> Benny didn't care though, so Benny. Um, I guess we should talk a little bit about the story. Yeah. If you haven't seen the movie or if you haven't seen it in a while and you didn't listen to my warning, way back in ancient Egypt, there's a guy who's got it bad for this <laughs> this chick that likes to walk around in gold body paint. And, and who could blame it? Totally out of bounds. Like <laughs> Yeah. There's just one the problem. It girl that like <laughs> she's taken by the football player, you know? Pretty much. Except the football player is the pharaoh. Yeah, basically same thing, you know. And, uh, you know, Imhotep's messing with the quarterback's girl. <laughs> and things get out of hand. They murder the pharaoh. For love. 
Uh, of course. I mean, as long as it's for love. <laughs> yeah. What's a little murder between lovers? <laughs> uh, he ends up on the run. Anksuna Moon dies. She stabs herself. Sure. Very Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Uh, Imhotep escapes, but he and his priests steal Anksuna Moon's body. Which and... that could be a movie in and of itself. I was watching the prologue this it's time, like, and I'm like, see... "How did he get away? How did they get her body?" We need like, a prequel uh, movie. We need yes. a prequel movie now. Yes. Anyway, they steal her body. They take her to Hamanoptera, where they're going to bring her back to life because Imhotep has the juice to do that. Apparently, yeah. and then they can live happily ever after. That's right. Yeah. Except. Uh, I mean, Except the pharaohs they, they guards just pop out the of pharaoh. nowhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> and the pharaohs guards weren't happy about it, so they stop him, and they mummify all of his priests alive. Ouch! It would not be fun. Yeah, proper. And they also though. do something special with Imhotep, which is they, do. uh, they don't really mummify him so much. They do parts. They cut out his tongue. You know, they don't ever talk about pulling out his eyes unless unless it's just that they've rotted away or whatever. I guess that's what I always assumed. But yeah, they throw in some uh, scarab beetles into his sarcophagus before they seal him up with a special sarcophagus with a special key. Just yes. in case, you know, there's there's no getting out of that one. No. And there's a curse. And also. there's a curse. The Very worst important curse. curse. Yes. The one that the ancient Egyptians feared so much that they decided to use it. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we're doing a really bang up job of explaining this. Dude, people are like You're riveted. The riveted. <laughs> you you guys are so glued to the screen right now. <laughs> Basically the it it's weird to me that like we're gonna curse him in such a way that if he ever were to come back he would be almost unstoppable, you know? Mm -hmm. And I guess it's, I don't know. Stuff like this obviously is fictional, but like, I guess it's in the story supposed to be like the Egyptians believed in an afterlife. They valued this afterlife. They were going to deny him that afterlife. Oh my gosh. I feel so dumb that that never occurred to me. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, pretty sure I, that's what it was supposed to be. To me, what it sounded like was, this guy caused a lot of trouble in his life. So we're going to kill him in such a way that if he ever comes back, he <laughs> can cause right. even more. <laughs> yeah. I get it, though. If he can't get into the afterlife, that makes total sense. I, I has a least, dumb. I don't know. It's never explained specifically, but that's kind of my reading of it. Okay. Uh, I dig it. Anyway. You know, fast forward a few thousand years to 1923, and suddenly we have a big battle taking place on Hamanoptera. And you know, this is one of the most interesting things. This movie does a great job of introducing characters. It so does. Well, it really it, does. Not just the intro. Like, this movie, this is such a lost art today. It takes time to do things. And... It takes specifically to introduce characters, to set up things that are going to pay off later. It takes the time to do, but it does it really well because it never bogs down the pacing. Like, if you think about it, this movie, it starts out basically just with exposition, but it makes it interesting. All, all of the stuff in ancient Egypt, it's just set up for what the story is. Yep, just but it prologue. makes it really interesting. Mm -hmm. And... Then, you know, you show up in Hamanoptera in 1923, you're very quickly introduced two of the big characters, O'Connell and Benny. Yep. But then we get a big action scene so that it just, it's a balance. And then after that, we come back to the Cairo Museum where Evelyn works. And then we get introduced to Evelyn. And it's it introduces her. And then you have that cool scene where she wrecks the library you know <laughs> and then uh then you move into another scene where it introduces jonathan and he's a little you, bit of a prankster and you know right away you also know that he's a shyster because he's 
basically somebody that's kind of a screw up. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, you know, it introduces these things that gives you a little taste of kind of what their dynamic is as uh, brother and sister, and then introduces this treasure map. It's still technically exposition, mm -hmm. but it makes you interested. So then you go to the next scene where they're showing the map to the curator. Same thing. It's exposition, but you're interested, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's done really well. It's clever. The pacing is never bogged down or slow. And again, I think personally, part of the reason it works so well is because their characters are all interesting. And yes. the actors who play them are so good. Jonathan well, they are, yeah. is so funny. And he still has his use in the story you know we still need him he yeah. gets things done in his own way but his connection with evie is so sweet and great and the way he gets along with rick and oh my gosh I, i'm sorry i'm just babbling but i think that's right, part of though. the reason it works so well is because your characters are so good of several things all coming together though because a lot of the stuff when it comes to pacing is in the script. Like what is in the script is not always exactly how it ends up in the final movie, but it's at least like a roadmap. Mm -hmm. So you have to give them credit there, but you also have to give credit to the director for keeping it interesting and not bogging down here or deciding we're going to spend more time on this because the director can do that. Mm -hmm. And then the actors for keeping it live and fresh and interesting and like it's just everything it's i don't know i know we're gushing about the movie but <laughs> i love this movie i do too speaking of introductions there's really one character that gets introduced twice have you thought of this is, the is it Bay? just no it's rick he does but doesn't like he? it's interesting because it's almost like he's a different character at that point because you get introduced to him in 1923, when he's part of the French Foreign Legion, mm -hmm. and then loses all of his men, loses everything, basically, and probably barely survives the trek through the desert back to civilization. But, but my gosh, it tells you so much about how strong he is, right? Yeah. Like, his, the commanding officer runs off scared, so he just steps right in. Yeah. And then Benny betrays him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, ah, Benny. And then when he's alone and the desert is trying to eat him up dude how far must he have walked on foot and no still kidding. survived that's another movie i'd like to see you know yes and then when uh, you see him again later but then in the when jail they reintroduce him yes it's like this is a little bit different character than he was three years ago you know mm -hmm. which is very clear the dude's been through it mm -hmm. he was apparently getting drunk at the bar when <laughs> When Jonathan stole the little key of Hominoptera from him, uh, it's just, it's really clever. And they do this. This is all not explained. You know, this is not explicitly in the movie. It's stuff that you have to observe and kind of put together. And that's really clever. Yeah. And then I let's just... talk about the fact that he was hung and still survived. Yes. And was still fine. Like, he is a tough mother. <laughs> He just, right. like, can take a serious beating. And I, I think it's interesting that they take two opportunities to show you that. They do. It know. is an interesting thing. It's not something yeah. you see in a lot of movies, though. So. No. But it doesn't feel repetitive to me. No, it it's doesn't. It's not like, we get it, he's strong. Because it's not blatant. It's not, like, in your face. It's just... Well, and it's, it's just interesting that you can do all of this. And this all takes place in the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. But it doesn't feel boring. It doesn't bog down. Hopefully. And I really, part of me honestly wonders if this isn't all just some fantastic mistake. Because, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have my doubts that it's a mistake. But, like, for things to turn out that perfectly, it's like, wow. Are people that good? And, like, if so, where are those people in Hollywood now? You know? <laughs> right. I know. I Having worked in theater a bit, I I just know that there's so many people that go in to put a play together, and I know there's probably so many more people who go into putting a film together, and the odds of 
all of them meshing well and oh yeah the cr- the creative vision coming together and i mean there's all kinds of stories when you get one person in there who causes trouble or two people oh, don't yeah. get along or you know just the fact i think it's so awesome and kind of rare cheesy, but magical when yeah. it all comes together that way like they somehow this dozens maybe hundreds of people had the same you know direction they yeah. saw the same they were all pulling of what they in wanted. the same direction yes and it came together and it's i don't know that's why movies like this are special it's not yeah. easy to get a movie that comes together this well and has all no of the kidding. fun qualities that it does yeah and i guess that is why we kind of go nuts for it because it's just it's not that common no it's not so they've they find a map oh yes the jonathan story. stole a map from o'connell it turns out <laughs> Uh, he shows it to his sister, who shows it to the curator. The curator burns part of it accidentally. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they decide to go and consult O'Connell, who was the original owner, and ask for help finding Hominoptera. And that's kind of, you know, there's your seed you've planted. The seeds of adventure. And uh, what is also interesting is, you know, they immediately take O'Connell away to be hanged because he had a very good time and uh, <laughs> it's just knowing what you know about O'Connell when she saves him from being hanged just barely. Mm-hmm. I mean, she almost doesn't save him. Yeah. Uh, but when she saves him, he decides, well, I owe her, I guess. So off we go. And it's, yeah. Oh, it's such a cool, it's a pretty, it, like it takes longer to get started than you would think you would want to take. But But I think that's kind of the counterintuitive thing, though, because a lot of movies just get going, and it feels like, why are we even doing this? This is stupid. Because you (laughs) haven't built the foundation. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, it's hard. People have shorter attention spans nowadays, I think. They do. And and I mean... But I also feel like people don't give them enough credit, because I think if you tried it, people might surprise you. Yeah, especially if it's well done. Yeah. So I talked a little bit earlier about uh, the trivia stuff I was looking up. And a lot of the trivia is just not that interesting. <laughs> I'm not going to read you everything you can read on the <laughs> the IMDB page. Because you can read For it. one thing, a lot of that is repeated ten times. Because seriously, you will learn, oh, Brendan Fraser almost actually died when they did the hanging scene. Like 12 times in that. It's in there over and over. And it's just, it's like if you look up Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones decided to shoot the swordsman instead of the elaborate uh, fight scene they had planned because Harrison Ford had diarrhea. And then they will <laughs> scroll down three or four times, Harrison Ford had diarrhea. And then, you know, it's just like, okay, <laughs> we get it. Everybody knows that. It's not even trivia anymore. I'm pretty sure kids slide on out of the womb knowing Harrison Ford had diarrhea. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> My kids did. <laughs> That's right. You're raising them right. Uh, so I wrote down a couple that I thought were interesting. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for this? Bring it. Number one, Brendan Fraser almost died in the hanging. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Here's one that is actually, to me, interesting. So the prison scene was shot entirely in an apartment complex in Marrakesh. And you stop and you think about that. Go watch that scene. And it's like, this is the courtyard inside a freaking apartment complex. And they turned that into a prison scene. And like all of the places where they're sitting and all the men who are chanting, cut him down, cut him down. Like Those are all just porches. the balconies for the yeah. apartments. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's way cool. Um, that I thought was interesting. I did not um, know that one. Wow. And here's something like, I am ashamed that I didn't know this. Ardith Bay's name is never said in the film. We don't actually know that until The Mummy Returns. And that never <laughs> clicked to me. Wow. You're right. 
I I keep thinking of when the guy's like, oh, this bay, but that's the mummy but returns. That's the mummy returns. That's yeah. the mummy returns. Yep. Um, there's a bunch of characters in this that ha- all have names that are never said in the movie. Like the curator, he has a ah, name. I was thinking that. I'm like, I don't know the curator's name. Yeah. The Egyptologist, he has a name. Yeah, most of the Americans. I know Burns. The Americans, you know, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Burns, Henderson. and uh, what's, what's the other one? Uh, we'll never know. Daniels. Oh, all right. Okay. So, Henderson, Burns, and Daniels. But they actually say those at different points of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, you never... I wrote it down somewhere here. Uh, oh, the... No one ever talks to the Egyptologist and calls him Dr. Alan Chamberlain. Oh, is that his name? That's his well, name. How about the warden? Does he have a name? The warden has a name. The warden is God Hassan. Oh, I just knew him as a smelly old friend. <laughs> <laughs> smelly little fellow. <clears throat> and you know, I, my gosh, whenever I see a review for this movie, this is a pet peeve of mine. Everybody's okay. like, well, it's a great movie other than like the racist uh, stereotypes. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, you're basing that basically just on how they treat the warden. You're, so you basically what you're saying is you assume they're saying every Arab is like the warden. But that is never said in no. the movie. Maybe that and guy just, just doesn't bathe. But on top of that, like it's so one directional that it's oh, it really well, bugs me because I've no never one picked up on that. Personally. No one looks at Benny. Well, you haven't watched enough YouTube reviews because almost a, it's like they earn social credit points for being like, well, actually, except for the racist stereotypes. Yeah, whatever. Okay, eh. but nobody looks at Benny and thinks, oh, well, they're saying that all Hungarians are sleazy, backstabbing, you know, <laughs> cheaters who will betray you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's just I've totally gone off on a tangent. No, that's that's uh very trivia. interesting. Okay. Now, if you read IMDB's I read trivia it, page, you. yes. <laughs> if you read the trivia page on IMDB for any movie, you will see the usual crap. Oh, they offered the roles to and it's every big and, name, you yeah, know. Yeah, like 20 people. Yeah. But it's it's just like, yeah, sure they did. Like but there are a couple a couple of them that there is actually a little bit of evidence for. Supposedly, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Cruise were offered the role of Rick O'Connell. So how old was Leonardo DiCaprio at that point? I still don't know. Because I, I this know. would have been right after Titanic. Which I know he's supposed to be an adult in Titanic, but he just kind of I I he's with a young the nineties haircut, I always picture yeah. him as like a teenager, you know. Anyway, um, sorry. And then of course Tom Cruise went on to play a character in a different mummy movie. In a different mummy movie that everybody hated but me. I liked it too. <clears throat> it's well, not this movie, but it's not it's don't fun. get me wrong, like it will never hold a candle to this movie. No. But like everybody's like, it was so horrible. I'm like it's not this movie. If that's what you're judging it by, then yes, it's horrible. Yes, no, it's but I a, it's it was its fun. own movie. But it's I I liked it okay. It yeah. it will never be my mummy movie. No, but, of course not. Uh, also, Ardeth Bay is the mummy's alias used in the 1932 mummy. So it's still in Hotep. Oh, Hotep, right. The Boris the Karloff plays. Yes. But, so that movie, if you haven't seen it, I feel like we should bring this up. That movie is what Stephen Summers, the director, claims was the inspiration for this. That it, this is almost kind of a remake or a reimagining of that. Mm-hmm. So if you watch that movie, there is no action whatsoever. There's, I can't call it really an adventure movie. There's a team working in Egypt in 1922, and they find a mummy buried out away from everything else along with a chest and a couple other little things and inside the chest is a scroll called the scroll of thoth and somebody starts translating the writing on the scroll of thoth and that wakes up the mummy he never actually reads the scroll he's just translating it and apparently that does it he wakes up 
walks over and grabs the scroll. The guy that sees it snaps and goes nuts. And then the mummy walks out. And you fast forward 10 years and a guy shows up, played by Boris Karloff, who looks like he has never seen moisturizer in his life. <laughs> and he says his name is Ardeth Bay. And he leads them to the tomb of Princess Anksanamu. Well, isn't in the old one, he's still trying to reawaken Anksanamu. And then he finds yes. a woman in the 20s to kind of be the... Yes. Right? So that's similar. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. There are lots of similarities. We've we've talked about this off camera, but uh, Stephen Summers claims this was just based on the 1932 mummy. The only mummy film I was interested in, and the only one I'd ever seen, was the original of Boris Karloff. And it's funny because people started throwing other ideas at me as I was going along. They say, oh, do you have this in it? And do you have that in it? I said, no, where does that come from? They go, the mummy movies. And I, I was like, oh, I only watched the original. So for those of you who haven't seen the old original Universal Mummy movies, there was the original one in 1932 where Boris Karloff plays in Hotep. Uh, there were never any actual sequels to that movie. They came along a few years later and made more Mummy movies, but those have a different mummy, Karis. So they made one of those in 1940, two of them in 1942, I think, and then another one in 1944, something like that. There's four of those mummy movies with Karis. Now, the first one of those, The Mummy's Hand, I would actually say is the only one of the bunch that qualifies as an adventure movie. What gets me is Stephen Summers claims that uh, this was based entirely on the 1932 mummy. Well, there's an awful lot in The Mummy's Hand that is really similar to the 1999 mummy. There are some parts that are they're almost shot for shot. Almost. Yeah. I was kind of shocked when what I watched it. What are the ones it. that you noticed? Because I'm curious if you if we're on the same page about this. Um, when they're wrapping Karis up and it shows him bound up and then they're wrapping it around his head and his eyes are all big, just like <laughs> yeah. in you know that one. So they reused, whenever they did the uh, flashback to ancient Egypt, they actually mm -hmm. reused the footage from the 1932 mummy and that, except for all the close-up shots of Boris Karloff, they used the new guy, Tom Tyler. No way. But, like, in the far-off shots, you can still tell that it's Boris Karloff. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Huh. Um, um, there was also the... I don't think he's a curator in the mummy's hand, but the... Yes. Oh, is he? Or, well, or something like it, yes. In that movie, it's a vase. It's not a paper yeah. map. It's a vase that's got mm -hmm. things carved on it. And he shows it to the curator, and the curator smashes the vase. Like, oops, yeah. I guess on you accident. can't. Yeah, I guess you can't look for that. So I, I watched that, and I was like, oh, okay. Yep. But that's the same plot device, you know. It's really similar in that. Yeah. So I, I made some notes about that. Two main characters find something that will lead to a fabulous discovery. The curator shoots down their hopes and dreams and accidentally damages the evidence. Uh, the mummy kidnaps the girl and takes her back to a temple to be part of some ritual and ties her down to an altar mm -hmm. where the main character has to swoop in and rescue her. Mm -hmm. That is that is so similar, it's like surprising, I yeah. thought. And I mean, she's tied, it looks... Of course, the set is not the same, but it's it looks very it similar looks how very it's set up. Similar. Her her yeah. ankles and wrists are tied. She's yeah. Okay, those are some similarities. Could that sure. be a coincidence? That's I feel like that's similar. a bit a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm not trying to say that there's some kind of grand conspiracy here or anything, but. Clearly, there was quite a bit of influence taken from The Mummy's Hand as well as from The Mummy. And well, yeah. no one ever talks about that. I could also argue that The Mummy's Hand has a level of comedy that they're trying to incorporate it there. It does. And, well, I, and it has adventure elements that are not in the 1932 Mummy. Right. Yeah. So I think that tone was probably yeah. uh, drawn as inspiration. But a point I want to make, which is part of the reason we wanted to do this for October, because um, it's, it's an adventure movie. The 1999 Mummy is an adventure movie that's like half adventure, half monster movie. Yeah. Um. So there's creepy 
1932 Mummy is was meant to be a horror movie. It was a monster yes. movie. Mm-hmm. So, and there trying... is definitely the romance element, but there is sure. no adventure really. There's no action. Uh, granted, like there's some action in the Mummy's hand, but 1940s action and <laughs> 2000s yes. action are very very different yes. oh yes comparing brendan fraser <laughs> doing fighting all those mummies and then the really bad you know they did their best oh, yeah. and back then there probably weren't you know they were just figuring out what making movies was so you know they didn't well, not have... just that like most of the old universal monster movies were made to be incredibly low budget they were made really fast really cheap you know. Oh, makes it's sense. not that they're bad movies. I actually like all of them, but mm-hmm. uh, you can tell they were they were made on a tight budget. <laughs> so I'm sure it was th- thrown together like I don't know, hit this guy, and <laughs> yeah, he'll just probably. fall. Yeah, you know? um, yeah, the audience will buy it. Yeah, they'll, they'll yeah. love it. Yeah. So you also had an idea, mummy related, you wanted to do for Halloween. Yeah. Now most people don't know. Uh, you and I started this channel several years ago, and at that time, you lived a lot closer. Yeah. We filmed several episodes, most of which never saw the light of day, uh, except one, our first episode about Jungle Cruise. That made it. At that point, you had already moved away, though. And so yes. it was a massive ordeal to get together and film. We ended up having to reshoot it because we had audio problems. It was a nightmare. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh. Well, that, there was that. I ended up, I was having a kidney stone. I, As it turns out, I had 17 kidney stones while we were filming that. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Oh, I um, And then, that too. you know, obviously it just wasn't feasible to have you drive an hour this way to film and then an hour home. Yes. So I started doing my thing. You, in the meantime, have started your own YouTube channel because you bake. Yeah. In the food sense, not in the, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super into, you know, <laughs> <laughs> drugs myself. Uh, <laughs> mom watches this. Don't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've just kind of started a little thing. I enjoy baking and trying out new things. So I've just been posting little videos here and there. It's, it's yes. still new, but I thought to talk it... her into do big videos also. I know I'm, I'm new to video editing and things like that. I'm very intimidated by it, but I'm working on it. I'm going to get there. But you decided you wanted to do something mummy themed, you know, like a mummy themed cake for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. So you called me and we I brainstormed. <laughs> yeah. And my genius, I have to say this because I you did all the work and I just came up <laughs> with some ideas that you kind of liked. <laughs> we threw around some ideas. You came up with a cake that was really cool, I thought. Thanks. Talk about it. So I wanted it to be themed off of this movie because I have a great, great love for this movie. So, uh, in rewatching The Mummy, uh, they don't really eat anything. I was trying to pull flavor ideas from the movie, and yes. there's one part where the Americans are, I think, snacking on grapes or something, but other than that, it's just a lot of drinking alcohol. Yes. So, <laughs> and uh, in our family, at least, some famous mentions of bourbon. Because I used yeah. to, I remember I used to quote that as a kid. <laughs> like, give me, yeah. a, give me another bourbon and a shot of bourbon and a and bourbon, a bourbon chaser. chaser. Yep. And I remember I saying that in Walmart once, and mom was like, stop saying that. People are going to think my yeah. children are drinking alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, going with the idea of bourbon. Uh, so I made a dark chocolate bourbon flavored cake. And then uh, for a filling, I made honeycomb candy, which if you're not into f- desserts or baking, I'm so sorry to be boring you with this. I'll be quick. But it's just kind of like a sugar syrup candy that um, is full of bubbles. You put baking soda in it and it bubbles up and it's crispy and light. Some people call it sea foam. 
Um, but our dad, we, we know growing up, would always talk about. Because <laughs> yep. I remember somebody asking if can honey go bad? And my dad would always say, no, no, honey doesn't go bad. No, they, they found, found honey, honey in the pharaoh's, pharaoh's tombs. <laughs> There's so... lots of things they found in the pharaoh's tombs that I wouldn't want to eat. But, you know. <laughs> Somebody just stuck their finger in that. And it went. never says that like it was still edible, but they found it. <laughs> they found it in there, by golly. Yeah. So <laughs> I felt I had to pay homage. So the honeycomb Definitely. was put in between the layers of cake. Um, and then also I wanted it to be a little bit crunchy because the only time where you actually see someone eat something is when Emotep eats the scarab eats that crawls scarab. into his cheek and it sounds quite crunchy it does. so i wanted there to be some crunch um and then i decorated the cake to look like i attempted to make it look like the the face in the sand below the, the sand. statue and i thought you did a great job thank you i've never sculpted before it was my first time trying to do a three-dimensional face shape so i was a little nervous yes. but and it throughout all of this good. With the magic of editing, I'll put in pictures, Woohoo! maybe video, but the only... check out her channel because there's going to be more about how she did it on there. Yes, I'm going to make a full video, It's and you'll be very proud of me. Yes, yes, I um, will. But... So excited. Here we go. Ooh, the crunch layer. The crunch. That's great. Is that the, the honeycomb. And there's a little bit of dark chocolate in there too, like just drizzled. Wow. Um. Oh, it's going to fall. Nope, we're good. That looks pretty freaking good. <laughs> um, but, yes, I... <laughs> for my first time sculpting a face, I was like, okay. Although, later I, I it realized... it really well. <laughs> Thank you. But in the movie, you know how there's the sound effect where it comes out of the sand and it goes... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. Just like that. <laughs> it's like, ah. So his mouth is super elongated because Stephen Summers. <laughs> um, but my <laughs> my cake face it wasn't quite that tall. All all told, I was pretty happy with how it turned out for my first attempt. And then I sprinkled graham cracker crumbs on the top so it would look a little more like sand. It, and it did. And I gotta say, it tasted... It tasted great. It tasted pretty good. I was really impressed with the flavor. Uh, the bourbon flavoring with the dark chocolate kind of complimented. And I don't... I thought that was brilliant. Thank you. I don't drink personally, so I don't... I don't know what bourbon normally tastes like. And I used a bourbon extract because I, yeah. I wouldn't know the first thing about purchasing real bourbon. Well, um like, it really did add to the dark chocolate flavor. It was just really, really good. Thank you. It was oh, a great, yeah, you... great cake. Thank you. If you want to check out my channel, yes. it's a sweet misbake. So it's like a yes. mistake, but with a You can a see it on the screen there, hopefully. There I will also put links in the description. Thank you. And I'm also on Instagram, at a sweet misbake. So, Excellent. there you go. I'm sorry about the boring stuff. Back to adventure. <laughs> it was a really good cake. And I we came up with a lot of different ideas for how to like decorate it. What mm -hmm. what I thought was interesting is at first I thought you just wanted decoration tips. So I came up with some ideas of stuff you could decorate it like. Which were good ideas. I liked them. Yeah, I just yeah. they would have taken a lot more <clears throat> energy and oh, time well, than and I had. Some of them were way too ambitious. <laughs> <clears throat> And I feel like we, we settled on something good, but I like that you also themed the flavors to the movie. Thank you. I don't find you know, so. Like the the honeycomb is not in the movie, but it's 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 at least mummy adjacent. Like it's sure. It's really Egypt. you can see it from here, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I have a thing that I 
like to do when I remember, which is not all that often, but uh, I like to go through adventure connections, which is little things like when I did Sahara, awful movie. John Reese davies is in it, though, and he's been in a ton of adventure movies. And I just like to make those little connections. You know wait, what wait, I mean? wait. Sahara, this isn't the... Not the one you're thinking of. Okay. I was like, yeah. what? It's the, the Brooke Shields epic that uh, they thought was, like, going to be the next Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, oh, no. And, you know, I have to say, Brooke Shields is a, a fine actress now. Yeah, yeah. When she was Not younger... Then. I wish we could stay here forever. But we risked our lives taking the shortcut. Now we're losing all that we've gained. You must understand what this race means to me. Anyway. She came a long way. She learned. She improved. And isn't that what life's about? Yes, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, adventure connections. Uh, there are a ton of adventure connections to this movie. Tons of the people in this movie have been in a lot of other adventure things. So, let's go down the list. Yeah. Brendan Fraser, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Right. I remember he was in those. And that is... I mean, I really like the old version of I Journey to the too. Center of the Earth. Yeah. And I felt like the new one was just an excuse for CGI and 3D gimmicks. Our favorite thing. But the actual setup to the story is really good. And it sort of pays homage to the original. And I really like that. Okay, I'll have to watch it. I haven't seen it. Oh, you've never seen it? I thought you no. watched it when... Okay. Anyway. Sorry. Okay, well, it's and this, not... this is not... An exhaustive list by any stretch. Oh, so if, it's not, if you have anything to add, out. just uh, put it in the comment there. We'll be happy to add it to the list. Educate us. Uh, Rachel Weiss mm -hmm. was in Oz the Great and Powerful. Right. Never saw it, but saw the trailer. Uh, the Brothers Bloom. I kind of kind of feel like she qualifies. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> And this is also in addition to like the mummy sequels. I'm not going to count the mummy sequels because obviously, you know, sure. Uh, Arnold Vosloo, mm -hmm. everybody's favorite high priest of Osiris. Uh, <laughs> but the big one is a show I've mentioned on the channel before Veritas the Quest, which I freaking love that show. It's a show that uh, got canceled immediately. There is no good way to watch it, but it's a great oh. show. And oh. Arnold Vosloo was in. Uh, Arnold Vosloo was also in Blood Diamond, which I don't know if I consider to be an adventure movie, but uh, it is listed as an adventure movie. I see it in lists all the time that well, people I mean... consider it to be an adventure movie. Uh, I haven't seen huh. it in many years, so I need yeah. to kind of rewatch it. Then you have Kevin J. O'Connor, Benny. Uh, he was in Van Helsing. Yes. And I do feel like Van Helsing kind of counts as an adventure movie. Yeah, it's probably another one like this. Monster movie meets adventure movie. And it's another kind Stephen of. Summers, so it, it makes Stephen sense. Summers. Yeah. And it was after Stephen Summers really decided he loved lots of CGI. He did, yeah. Uh, then we have, this This is a big one. Jonathan Hyde, who is Dr. Alan Chamberlain. That's never said in the movie. He's right. the Egyptologist. They refer to him in the movie just as the Egyptologist. So he, most notably to me, was in the original Jumanji movie. Oh, of plays course. Robin Williams' dad, but then he also plays, uh, what's his name, Van Pelt? The one with the, the rifle? The yeah. Yes, I forgot about that. He was in Anaconda, another one I haven't seen in a long time. I haven't seen that in forever. And he was also in a movie called The Curse of King Tut's Tomb. I have seen it. It's awful. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to review it for the channel. Awesome. Um, it's it's one of those that's just completely off the wall. Then you've got Oded Fair who plays Ardeth Bay. Mm -hmm. He was oh, in Oh, I know. Oh, you know. Yeah, you uh, know. I know one. Uh he was in Arabian Nights, which is a a mini series Back when I was in high school in 2000. Uh, but definitely counts as adventure. Uh, and go ahead. Blood and Treasure. Blood and Treasure. He's the Yay. main bad guy in the first season. Yeah, he was great. He was great. That's a great show. Yeah. Then we have Eric Avari, who is the curator. And again, they never say his name, but it's Dr. Terrence Bay. 
Now wait, he's... wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah. Ardith Bay and Terrence Bay. Yeah. They're both bays. Yes, but bro bay spelled different. So the Ardith Bay in the 1932 movie, they spell it slightly differently. Oh. So <clears throat> Ardith Bay in this movie is A R D E T H B A Y. Mm-hmm. But they switch the vowels between the words in the 1932 one. It's A R D A T H B E Y. Oh, and Ardaf B. Ardaf B. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Dr. Terrence Bay is B E Y. And in this movie, Ardaf Bay is B A Y. Oh, okay. This Sorry. Is, I'm probably going to cut this because it's so. I know. But. Into the weeds. Nobody's going to care. <laughs> I know, but I just have to say that they're in cahoots. So I was like, oh, are they like, anyway, that's like, well, and honestly, that would be a cool thing because like, is the curator actually part of the Magi? That would make sense. That would be actually a really cool thing. And that would call back to the mummy's hand because it would. Yeah. The guy who's, was it the curator in that one too? Maybe that's going to be my new headcanon that he is secretly a member of the Magi. Mm. Anyway, so he was in the original Stargate movie. Oh, yes, he was. I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, he is in the second Librarian movie. Okay. You haven't seen the Librarian movies yet, have you? No. They're pretty good. Okay. Uh, he was in three episodes of Warehouse 13. Uh, then we have the warden, mm-hmm. Omid, Omid Jalili. I okay. probably butchered that. <laughs> was also in one episode of Relic Hunter in the third season. Then we have Patricia Velasquez, who plays Anaxana Moon. Moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in uh, a little game recently called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh. Where she plays Unuratu, the leader of Paititi. Oh. And I, when I played that, I like, because, you know, they motion capture the performances and then they put like different faces on hmm. and I'm playing the game and I'm like that voice is so freaking familiar to me and I'm like can that be the chick that played in Aksuna Moon I looked it up it's her that's pretty impressive because she only says I think three lines well in the in... moment of turn she has a lot of lines oh that's true yes so, you know uh and then of course Stephen Summers the director he also directed The Jungle Book in 1994, which that's is a, fun a great movie. movie. Yeah. That's another that's another adventure movie I would put very, very high on my list. There's a few things we haven't talked about. The music. Oh, it's so good. It's really freaking good. It's so good. I'm a huge fan of Jerry Goldsmith anyway. He just, he's done so many good soundtracks. It has that Jerry Goldsmith flair, but then it also has all these strange, exotic-sounding instruments that they've put into it. Mm-hmm. And you can pick them out readily. They just, something about it sounds so foreign, you know? I agree. I think it's interesting. I think it's rousing. It's very exciting. Uh, the theme that plays every time Rick O'Connell <laughs> starts punching or shooting Yes. It's just like, it gets me every time. It's just it like, really is. Yes. Good. I don't know if it's quite up there with like Indiana Jones, you know. I'm going to put it close, but maybe not quite on the same level. Sure. But I it think is... it's super fun. And like the yeah. the lovely theme, the love theme that plays yes. between both couples. It's, yeah, it's nice. I'm I'm a huge fan. And like I say, I can quote the movie with the soundtrack because <laughs> I am yeah. pathetic, but you know. And I feel like it's just one of those that adds so much to the movie. I can't imagine watching this without the music in it. Mm-hmm. It really does add a lot to it. Of all the treasure rooms in all of the adventure movies, this is probably the best one. That shot where you know, they come through a, like a crack in the wall and then he, he sees one of the mirrors that, you know, they've earlier in the movie used for lighting and shoots it and it rotates into 
into the proper position and just light bounces around the room. And it's just like more treasure than in. Yeah. It's comparable to the national treasure treasure room, but even bigger. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. But that's exactly what I was thinking of. Like the only other movie that, feels similar in that way is national treasure i'd like to say that the sets are really cool sets watching it again like the room where he's trying to do the sacrifice with the pools of disgusting black water and the stairs yes. and um the obelisks the it's just amazing the the scale of it which of course i didn't pick up on as a kid but you watch it now and i'm like oh, I, I can't the sound stages must have been like well, and I really massive. when when Benny throws the switch that causes the city to self destruct, <laughs> and everything starts to like just sink because mm-hmm. there's parts of the set that actually wild. It's insane, and that freaks me out so bad. There are shots. I still get uncomfortable when Benny oh is gosh. trying to crawl underneath yes. the huge. I That's can't. what I was gonna bring up. Yes. That and when, you know, the doorway's closing and Rick, you know, holds his hand out, even after all the that know. Benny has put him through, he's still willing to grab him and pull him through, but there's just yeah. not enough time. He's like that shot, ooh, that gets me. And then when mm. he's crawling out and just barely makes it, mm. just thinking about it just sends chills up my spine still. It just, I just did it. It happened. That yeah. was real. It's true. Yeah. Uh, here's something. Mm hmm. What criticisms would you offer for this movie? What is there anything about this movie you didn't like or don't like? Um, I don't like that the warden's wang is poking out. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. Um, no, in this last watch through, there are a couple things that I mean, it's hard because it's so nostalgic for me, and I've, I'm very defensive about it because it's a big part of my childhood. And... Something I've been trying to do. Uh, especially when I'm watching a movie to review it is even if it's the crappiest movie that I mm-hmm. have seen, I try and think of something I like about it. And even if it's a movie that I just love dearly, like, like the Indiana Jones trilogy, I try and think of something that I can criticize about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just as like a mental exercise. This last watch through, and I was reading some of the, like the goofs yeah. on imdb and they pointed out some stuff that i was just blissfully not paying attention to and such every as? time i watched it well things like um when benny is loading up the camels full of gold where'd those camels come from <laughs> yeah when they went there benny emotep and evelyn traveled by sand and rick and the other two came by plane so... I actually have something that might. So remember, they go to him, they go to Hamanopter twice in the movie. Mm-hmm. So there's the first time, and then they leave in a hurry because they've awakened a mummy, and then they come back. <clears throat> well, when they leave the first time, a lot of people have died. So all those camels they brought, they just left them there. Maybe they just left them there. And they've been sitting there for however long they were back in. Cairo. Maybe. I granted <laughs> like this is just something that sure. popped into my head right no, that's now. A, that's fair. No, that's but maybe. Maybe. Um yeah, and then just other things like it didn't it's not something that bugs me necessarily, but during the prologue, like I said, all that stuff with um Emotep, like he gets captured by the guards and then the next thing we see he's racing through the desert to Hamanoptra with his priests, and I'm like, how'd he I oh, want to know how well, he so got away. I can explain that one too. Uh, he does not get captured by the guards at that point. Those no? are his priests dragging him away out the back as oh. the magi come in the front. Well, so I've seen this movie so many <clears throat> times and clearly I don't understand it. But that's one of the great things I love when you see a movie, <clears throat> you've seen a movie a hundred times and you finally catch something that you've never caught before. Uh-huh. I love that. Yeah. I have a couple little things like there's if you've watched the deleted scenes, there's a deleted scene that I really wish they'd left in there. Mm-hmm. So you remember oh. when they find the Book of the Dead, the workers get melted by 
some kind of pressurized salt acid. Some sort of ancient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the same thing is set up for the Book of Amun-Ra, but that got mm -hmm. cut out. And it's like, it's the weirdest thing because cutting it out saves a couple of seconds of runtime, uh, but it also makes a little bit of a plot hole. So if you watch the deleted scenes, it shows O'Connell and Jonathan pulling at the, the compartment that the Book of Amun-Ra is in. And mummies come up out of the ground <clears throat> and wrestle them away. And this is while Ardeth Bay is keeping the other mummies at bay with a shotgun. The mummies throw O'Connell and Jonathan across the room, and they pull out the container that last bit, and they get melted by acid. And O'Connell a little bit hits him on the hand, and he, you know, shows that he's in pain. So in, later on in the movie, he he's a got bandage. a bandage around his hand. Yeah. And also... Uh, in the final version of the movie, when he reaches for a stick of dynamite, there's a big hole in the ground. Well, mm -hmm. it's one of the holes the mummy came up through, but they cut that out of the movie. Mm. I don't know why they didn't keep that in. It's, yeah, it only adds like, what, 30 seconds max to the it's movie? It's 20, maybe. It's yeah. pretty short, but, but yeah. Like, by cutting it out, you kind of introduce a plot hole. It's a very tiny plot hole. If, if I decided I had to criticize this to save my life, like, there is plenty about it that's just a little bit silly. Oh, sure. But, I mean, you're watching a movie about a reanimated 3,000-year-old corpse. I kind of feel like that's all you need to know about it to kind of <laughs> put your brain in neutral and enjoy the ride, you know? Yeah, right. Well, that's not real. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's why I watch it. Well, and that was one of the big criticisms I remember uh, specifically hearing with the Tom Cruise mummy movie is that a bunch of people are like, well, it's just too unrealistic. Like, you went to see a mummy movie. There's nothing realistic about this. Yeah, give me Mission Impossible. That's real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go see the documentary film Mission Impossible 12. <laughs> Rogue Reckoning or whatever it's called. Rogue Reckoning. <laughs> Oh god. Uh, yeah, isn't it funny how sometimes we're like, ah, I couldn't I couldn't buy it. I don't know. And then other times it's just like I It's true. Well, and we all I realize we all have our moments. We all have things that like we're willing to let go. Yeah. And then you something comes up and it's like, ah, not that one. You yep. know? So are there any last things you would like to say about the mummy? I love it. I will agree with that. This it's is uh, this is one of those movies that I just uh, I would put this in definitely top five adventure movies, maybe even top three. Yeah, number one for me is Raiders, but this is this is real close. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I feel like this is right up with the original Indiana Jones trilogy. Yeah, I think I agree that with that good. personally. It's it's one of my all time favorites. Not if I'm a... giving it a grade. Okay. Like I usually do. This is an. Yeah. It's got all the elements. It's got fun, humor, danger, cool location, Little intriguing bit of story, um, treasure. Tons of treasure. Romance. Romance. <clears throat> uh, cool characters. It's just cool it's one period. of those rare movies that's just really well done all around. I feel like this is a top tier adventure movie. It's so good. It gets it's my so highest fun. recommendation. Hundred percent. And if you haven't seen it, I really think it's worth your time. It's it so good. I it's really so fun. need to uh, send it to Grandpa. Apparently, <laughs> I guess. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> Dad was flabbergasted that he hadn't seen it. So. Oh, it's kind of wild to me. Yeah. Anyway, that is all we've got for today. Please, uh, you know, do the usual things, like and subscribe, and check out my sister's YouTube channel. If you are at all interested in baking, or even just to check out this cool mummy cake, give it a look. I'll put the, uh, the links in the description. And until next time, fortune and glory, my friends. Bye. <laughs>